Praise the Lord. Good morning, friends and family. Thank God for today. Thank God for the gift of life. He has kept us alive to see the first day, first Sunday of August. The Lord be praised forevermore. Once again, it's me, Usas Nogolo, with joy in my heart to bring the word of God concerning homes and family. As we hear the word of the Lord today, every sick areas of our homes will be healed. The power of God will touch our homes in the name of Jesus. Family and friends, come hear the word of the Lord. Invite your friends. Let's talk about homes in the name of Jesus. Today, I want to start with this word. Our eyes have seen the first Sunday of August. It is not by power, it is not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. One word that we have to give to our Father today is, Father, I love you. The time when you will be watching this video, when you get to this stage, this is not the time to say, give me shoe, give me a tie, give me anything that you truly desire. But just pause and say, Daddy, I love you. Jesus, I love you. That will be a word for the month of August. God, I love you in the name of Jesus. Once again, I want to still talk about homes. I want to talk about families and I have a very beautiful topic today. I like to talk about this. When it's time to talk about husband and wife, I'm always excited. And today I call it, he is my baby boy. Mm. He is my baby boy. Who is your baby boy? Holy Spirit of God, you are welcome. Speak your word like never before to your people. Let hearts be changed. Let hearts be blessed. Let there be a turn around for your people. Let the blessing of God dwell in our hopes in the name of Jesus. He is my baby boy. Family, who is your baby boy? For mothers who are here, for those who are wives, those who have be privileged to be pregnant and then that they have had babies when your baby arrived you know how you cuddle your baby you know how you really cherish that baby especially when the baby is born they want you to do skin to skin touch they want you to really give that baby a heavy cuddle and even when you have left the hospital, you know how much you cuddle that child in the name of Jesus. He is my baby boy. Who am I referring to today? You've got a baby boy in your home. He may be 40 years. He may be 50 years. He may be 32 years. But he is your baby boy. He is your baby. Just like you see your son how you cuddle your son, how you, how, you, how you cherish your son. That's who he is too. That husband of yours, he is your baby boy. And then I want to read a scripture. I will start my teaching from there today. And then it will be from Exodus chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Exodus chapter 2. And verse 6. Exodus chapter 2 and verse 6. What does it say? I want us to learn something from a, a person in the Bible and see how your husband is actually your baby boy. Exodus chapter 2 and verse 6. See what it says. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. Hmm. And behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him. And said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Praise the Lord. 
while I was thinking and meditating, the Holy Spirit started inspiring me on this to say, He is my baby boy. Your husband is your baby boy. The Bible said, when Moses' mother had Moses, at that time, a law has gone out that every male child should be killed. And I imagine the male children that have been killed before this time. These are children with destinies. These are children with a purpose. These are children that have come to do something. But the mother of Moses, when she gave birth to her son, she did something for her son. She did something for the child. Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit, speak your word. Good morning, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Moses' mother did something for Moses. The Bible recorded that she hid Moses for a while. That's where I am going today. How can you hide a child, a baby? When a child is born, you cannot stop the child from crying. You have done everything for the child. You have better the child, gave the child food, pampered the child, put diaper on the child. For no reason, the child will still cry. How did that woman do it? How did she achieve it? That she could hide that song that nobody saw it to be slaughtered. Nobody saw it. No one heard it. Because you cannot stop a child to cry. Especially the newborn babes. And at night, that's when they even are awake. Everybody is sleepy. They wake up for one reason or the other and they are crying. Most times they are just, for one reason or the other, we still don't even have answers to it. Maybe they are hungry or you have not placed them in the right position. The child will cry. How did that woman do it? Dad, mom, how did Moses' mom do it? That Moses was not discovered. Praise the Lord. Mom, you have a baby boy in your home. Your husband can be 40 years. He can be 60 years. But he's your baby. We are going to be learning a lesson today from the mother of Moses. Do you think Moses did not do a silly thing? Do you think Moses did not cry when he was supposed to be quiet? Moses' mother would have been all around Moses to ensure that every possible means to discover him to be killed, Moses' mother recovered. it. Her mom, that husband is your baby boy. Mom, that man, the father of your children, is your baby boy. Moses did not do anything for the mother to protect him in such a way. Moses has not started giving his mom money. Moses has not started preparing food. Moses cannot sweep the floor. But his mother... The Bible said, Moses' mother looked at him and said, this child is a goodly child. I'm very sure because they were very easy to give back the Hebrew women. I'm very sure she didn't even bother to go to the hospital. She had her baby in the house, even though we are not told. It was so easy. The mother of Moses, how did she do it? We cannot let, we, she cannot explain everything. But that woman, she did a good job. That woman, she did an excellent job. 
And we know who Moses eventually became. We know who Moses was. While I was reading my Bible, I found out that Moses was one person who didn't like injustice. Moses was one person who didn't like you maltreat another person. Moses would defend anyone who is being oppressed. Moses had a mother who secured his destiny. Moses had a mother who fought to ensure that this destiny was not wasted. Mom, that husband is your baby boy. That husband is your baby boy. Protect him. Hide those things that will make him a reproach. Cover those things that you know if the world knows it, it will bring shame. That thing that you know, if it comes out, it kills his self-esteem. That thing that you know, if anybody knows, you are ashamed. Your husband is ashamed. It kills the destiny of your husband. The purpose of God upon his life, that one does not make it shine. Who is Moses' mother? You think when we get to heaven that day, there will be a crown for that woman for having been able to secure this destiny, for having been able to preserve it. It was only Moses who had the anointing to meet Pharaoh and look at him in the face and say, Pharaoh, let my people go. Joshua, Joshua did not have that anointing. Joshua cannot tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Neither will Heron have that power, have the anointing. The anointing was on Moses. Your husband has got an anointing. And you are his mother to, be, to treat him like your baby boy. The Bible said, when the daughter of Pharaoh looked at the boy, um, I wonder how he just knew he was a baby boy. He said, this boy is one of the Hebrew children. Because he knows what has been said. That all the male children should be killed. And then the Bible said, she had compassion on the babe. The babe wept. The babe was weeping. Pharaoh's daughter, the Bible said, she had compassion. Pharaoh's daughter did not say, this is one of the Hebrew boy's children. Let us kill him. Take him to my father. Let us slaughter him. The Bible said, he had compassion. Mom, that husband is your baby boy. He could be how many years. He's your baby boy. There's a destiny for his life. There's a purpose for his life. I've not come to defend him because he could be doing some things that are very annoying. He could be doing some things that are very, you, can, you know, I cannot start explaining some of the things. But the mother of Moses, he saw that this one is a different species. This one is different. This one, nothing should tamper with it. I'm very sure that woman will not go to work as she ought to go. In order to ensure that that boy does not cry out so that someone will hear it. If the boy, she sees that this boy wants to cry, immediately we put the breast in his mouth. If he sees that this boy wants to crawl out so that somebody will see, she will stay by the door and ensure that she locks the door. If this boy wants to do anything that will make an outsider to see him, to slaughter him, the mother will stop it. Mom, that man in your life is not a coincidence. If you are a child of God, it's not an accident. He is your baby boy. Like the mother of Moses protected Moses from danger. Wife, 
protect your husband in such a way. Fight for him. Fight for him. Stand in the gap for him. Pray for him. If he needs any support in whichever form, support him. The Bible said, when she could no longer hide the child, let me read verse 3. Exodus chapter 2 and verse 3. And when she could not longer hide him, she took him for an ark in a bush rush and dumped with a slime and with porch, pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in, in the flag by the river bricks. Praise the Lord. The time will come, mom, that you may not be able to do what your husband is demanding for. The time will come, you are exhausted, you have done your best. Do you think the mother of Moses, she was just thinking, and then she thought of going to put her child in that river, in that sea, in that place? She wasn't thinking. That was an idea. The Holy Spirit made her do that thing. She wasn't afraid. She did not think that, oh, finally, that is where it's going to end. The Holy Spirit inspired her to do that thing. She will not do that thing with her own mind. Praise the Lord. How come it was when the child was there, the daughter of Pharaoh came? Wife, the times you are tired, you are exhausted, you have done your bits. Let the Holy Spirit give you what to do. You can salvage that situation. I wrote something down and I said, the time when you no longer think you can help him anymore, you are tired, you have actually done your best. But inside your heart, you are thinking, how do I help this man? The Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, our teacher, he will give you what to do. Praise the Lord. And when the day of reward comes, it is not the baby boy that will get the reward. It is you who stood in the gap, who did that job to salvage the situation, to ensure that the purpose of his life came to limelight. The purpose of his life was manifested. Mom, your husband, your darling, the father of your children, your sweetheart, your honey, your name, whatever you call him, he is your baby boy. Like the mother of Moses preserved that destiny. Like the mother of Moses watch over that destiny. Watch over him. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Don't say, I will not do it anymore. I am not for husband. Neither am I for wife. I am for marriage. I want to see that homes are beautiful. Homes are happy. The husband looked at his wife and said, you are the best thing that happens to me. The, the woman looks at the man and says, you are the best thing that happened to me. Family and friends, that man is your baby boy. Just like you have a son today, he will be a baby boy for another woman too. So for this one that you have been privileged to cross paths with, play the part of a mom. Let him be your baby boy. Preserve his destiny. Walk around him. The Bible said you were created because of him. The man had arrived already. But he now needed you. The man needed you to come. It is not because of you the man came. You came because of the man. Family and friends, the man has a destiny. The man has a purpose. The man has come to do something enviable. 
Can you imagine Moses led millions of people through the Red Sea? Millions, thousands of people. And then the neighboring nations will hear and say, there's one man, he's leading them. He's the man, he, they say when he puts the stick on the ground, something happens. The man, when he says something, that one happens. The man, when he says, fly, come, fly, come. When he says, water changed to blood, water changed to blood. That man, who is he? Some people will be looking out to see who is his wife. Who are his children? I want to know his mom. It's not only Moses. That husband of yours, he has a destiny. Just like Moses played, Moses' mother played her role. Mom, play your role. You will not lose your reward. You will, you will be glad you played your part. And when you get to meet Jesus, Jesus will say, well done, welcome, you did your job. The woman may not hold the stick that will divide the Red Sea, but the man who needs to divide the Red Sea, you are the one to preserve him. Family and friends, your husband is your baby boy. Your husband is your baby boy. Preserve that destiny. Walk around him. Support him. Pray for him. Be there for him in the name of Jesus. Two, so, it could be that he's not born again. And then he's doing what he's doing. So I'll read the book of Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 14. Quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 14. See what it says. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 14. It says, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. Praise the Lord. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. Maybe your husband is not born again. He's doing the things that make you upset. He's doing the things that are very, that you will not be Allow him anymore to be your baby boy. But dear mom, you that is born again, you that know more of God, you that know more of the word of God, you, your husband is not be sanctified because of you in his life. Your husband, when you pray for him, your prayers will be heard. Because of you in his life, when he prays, God does not see him. God is seeing you. Who is the sanctified person? Dear family of mine, your husband, once again, is your baby boy. Don't be angry. Don't be upset. Don't dump him. Don't abandon him. You also have your own children who will be baby boy to another woman. Sow seeds of righteousness. Sow seeds of love. Sow seeds that you will be glad you did. Family and friends, I love to talk about homes. I am excited when homes are happy. Mom, you cannot do this. You cannot play the role of a mother to a baby who has a destiny if you are not born again. Are you born again? Have you accepted the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Quickly say these prayers with me. Father, I thank you because you sent your son to die for me. Jesus Christ, his blood has washed me with the precious blood. I accept the Lord, ship of Jesus Christ. Wash my sins. Write my name in the book of life. I will walk in the newness of life. I will walk according to your ways. I will walk according to your precepts. And my life will give glory to your name. I will be able to stand in the gap for my husband and for my family in the name of Jesus. Thank you, family, once again for coming. Truly, I appreciate you. Thank you for being in my world. The Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus.
of Jesus. Family and friends, before we go today, there's a word I want us to use in this month of August. Lord, give me shoe. Lord, give me bag. Lord, give me a tie. No. When you wake up in the morning, you know what you're going to be telling? Father, Daddy, I love you. Dad, I love you. It is not only give me, we should tell him. Protect me. He has always done that before now. You wake up in the morning, you say, Daddy, I love you. That's going to be a, a watch word for the month of August. Dad, I love you. Thank you because you first loved me in the name of Jesus. Before we go today, I want us to pray. The Lord has kept us and preserved us. Our eyes have seen the first Sunday of August. It is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to honor you. We want to say thank you for loving us. Thank you for shedding your blood for us. Thank you for giving us Jesus. We honor you. We lift up your name high. We extol and exalt you. We are so grateful to you. The grace of God has been sufficient for us. You have been our shield and our buckler. Your grace has kept us. You have provided for us. You have shielded us. You hid us behind the pavilion. Your grace has protected us. Your hand of grace has been mighty upon our life. We have enjoyed your many any kindness we have enjoyed your many love we are so indeed grateful forever we are indebted to say thank you lord thank you for loving us thank you for keeping us thank you for watching over us thank you for being our shield thank you for being our protector thank you for loving us thank you for keeping us from the beginning of our lives till this time we have seen the month of january to julia and now august has begun these are your handwork. We do not take it for granted. Lord, we appreciate you. We exalt your name. We honor you. From our hearts, oh God, we are grateful. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for all you do for us. We cannot thank you enough. We appreciate you. In the name of Jesus. Father, as a family, as a people, as couples, we love you. In the name of Jesus of jesus once again thank you in the name of jesus for the love for the comment for sharing for liking god bless you i truly appreciate you in the name of jesus see you same time next week united kingdom is four o'clock and nigeria is four o'clock the lord bless you and keep you the grace of god will keep you even in the remaining months of the year the light of Jesus will shine upon every dark areas in our homes and cause his peace to dwell and abide in our homes in the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming, for sparing your time. I love you all and bye-bye.